All right, guys. <clears throat> Since these uh, sessions are recorded, I am going to go ahead and get this thing rolling. Um, as you guys may or may not know, if you're new to the Discord or if you don't usually attend these classes, my name is James. I'm one of the analysts here over at the Alpha Stocks Lab. Um, so for future reference, if you guys ever have any questions, you can always reach out to myself or any of the other Alpha traders. Um, but first and foremost, just want to go ahead and dive deep into, you know, the market as a whole, what we're looking at here, what we can expect out of it based on last week's price action. Uh, so zooming out here on the weekly time frame, I'm actually going to go for this session just because we are coming up on the end of the month. I do want to look at the monthly just to kind of get a, a better gauge of what's going on. Um, <clears throat> so we do have the possibility uh, if we can close this monthly with a strong green candle yeah, that we could. You. you got a heartbeat. Yeah, I do have a heartbeat. Buddy, Daddy's doing his class right now. A telescope. Yep. Can you go down with mommy and listen to mommy's heartbeat? Go get mommy's heartbeat. Ready? Da -dum. Da -dum. Da -dum. Yep, I'm alive. I'm alive and well. Go check mommy. Um, we do have, again, with the close of this candle, depending on how strong of a candle we can get out here with the volume on the remaining days of the month, um, we might have the opportunity here to get a nice three green soldiers or three white soldiers, however you want to call it, uh, type of pattern. So a very bullish continuation candle uh, pattern. So overall, market is pushing up. We're in all-time highs at the moment. We, we have set all-time highs prior, but we are just pushing higher and higher. I think the overall target at the moment is obviously going towards that $500 level um, and then possibly more. But I think as of right now, uh, 500 seems to be the target. It's not going to happen necessarily overnight. Jasper, buddy, I need you to go down to mommy. Um, it won't happen overnight by any means, but it's worth noting that that would be the general overall target for the market here. On the monthly time frame, you can see we're not even quite into overbought territory. We are in the 60s, um, but generally we're not overbought just yet. So we still have some room to move. You know, the weekly might show that we are approaching overbought territory, which it does. We are looking at the possibility of touching that 70 level on our RSI, um, which generally, again, correlates with being overbought. Um, weekly time frame, though, if we really look at this, we can see the strength of this candle uh, pushing from, you know, kind of almost to the lows of the previous week uh, before the buyers ultimately push this up. I think it's the same way on the daily if we look at it. Yeah, so the buyers did, the sellers rather, did push it down to the 20 day EMA. Um, so the buyers did also push it off of that level. Very strong, uh, especially with the volume that we did get. Wednesday's volume was, was okay. Uh, but Thursday's volume really showed us where the direction was headed with this, this huge volume spike. Um, nothing super crazy looking back, but noticeably larger than our mean volume and the finer mean volume you essentially just want to look at look at these volume bars kind of put your your line tool um over top of them just see where the general high is you can see that where i have my cursor right now uh was our kind of levels so you can see that this candle this candle this candle this candle like those ones were larger than our normal volume so it's worth noting and again thursday like i was saying we did get that push up above kind of our mean volume followed by even heavier continuation on Friday. Um, so again, bulls definitely took the uh, the reins there towards the end of the week, the second half of the week, um, and pushed this weekly candle to really close very strong, um, slightly ramping in the volume from the prior week, so we are getting some volume continuation. You can see in the past when we've had this happen, uh, we generally have another green week, uh, whether it's you know slightly more green or very green. Uh, you can see that when we when we ramp like this, we had this volume candle right here, the following had just slightly more, and then the third day had like really, really, or sorry, the third week had really heavy volume. Um, I kind of anticipate a similar situation for this next week. Now, whether it will be actually to the upside, that's um, yet to be yet to be seen. Uh, we could very well end up with a red candle on the week, but I do expect some volatility to start pumping into the market this next week. So be careful. Obviously, if you're used to being you know, full size at 
I don't know, let's just say $500 per trade, maybe size that down to 250, 300, um, just since, to get the feel for the volatility. That way you're not getting trapped and, and losing out on all the gains you guys have made over the last couple of days. But if we zoom down to the daily time frame again, once more, uh, we do have this consistent trend off of the 20 EMA here on the daily, um, getting some, some nice volume again, pushing higher and higher. We're not in overbought territory on the daily just yet. So there is room, you know, Tuesday, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday to get that volume push um, and continue moving up. So I anticipate that that'll be the case, but we'll play it day by day. 15 minute wise, let's go in here and just check out the general level so we can expect uh, to be trading here tomorrow's session. Um, obviously a very strong push that we had once we broke over, it looks like about 479, so about basically 480. Once we broke 479.50 to 480, the volume really pushed through and we did get that nice uh, quick $2 move out of SPY. So push from about 480 all the way up to about 482. We found 483s in after hours, uh, but ultimately the level that we, we kind of got stopped at was about 482.73. So we can expect that to be our general resistance at the at this point to get back over to continue moving forward, um, onward and upward. The <clears throat> if we do gap up tomorrow morning, which there's a there is a strong likelihood that that could happen with the way that we pushed up on Friday. Um, I would expect this range that we're looking at, this 480 to 70 to uh, 482 uh, bottom, I would say arguably even 481.73. So a nice dollar range right there. I'd like to see us hold this range as support uh, to continue moving higher. Kind of build a base off of it and then push for the next leg. On the downside, if we do break below that 481.70, I'm going to just move this down slightly, 481.70. If we do break below that, like I said, we did have that sharp move up. We have all this kind of loose liquidity um, that we could pull back into from about 479.50 to uh, 481.70. So keep that in mind that if we do start dipping down here, obviously the 60 EMA will start to curve up with us. Um, so a break of the 60 EMA, we could be looking at a possible retrace to the 200 as it starts to slope up, which should line up pretty nicely uh, with that kind of support we had, or the resistance rather, that we had on Friday before we had the breakout. So key levels again right now, I would say without knowing exactly where we're gonna where we're gonna be at tomorrow morning, 481.70 is your breakdown for puts, and 482, um, I would say 482.70 actually at 4270 would be your breakout for calls so that's what i'm looking at there for spy nothing crazy is it's really straightforward here um you know we have this this strong push up we want to see continuation for the bulls to continue to keep this uh, momentum going but the bears definitely have a nice range they can target down here uh, for a healthy pullback to be completely honest so that's SPY there, guys. Uh, before I do go on to any other stocks, uh, ETFs, does anybody have any questions kind of going over? It, well, basically what I just went over. If there's anything that you didn't understand, please do speak up. Everyone pretty good? Perfect. All right, and obviously, if you guys do have any questions, feel free to chime in at any point. Um, we're going to look at QQQ here. QQQ is going to have a very similar look to SPY just about every single week. These guys kind of mimic each other uh, in general price action. I will say SPY, I believe, has one more week um, on QQQ as far as four being green. Uh, so QQQ could be lagging just slightly behind SPY right now, which is good for us um, as traders to know that we could be looking at you know, a potential really green week here on QQQ, just simply because we've already had our three green weeks on um, SPY. So we, we could be looking at possibly a third green week here on QQQ. So looking at upside mostly, just because that's what the trend generally tells us. Um, but similar setup as far as Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, QQQ just blasted off this volume ramping up right now. I mean, you can see, again, if we just kind of put it where the main volume is, I would say generally like right here 
where my cursor is at, that line that my, my um, app is creating is your mean volume. So anything that pops over top of it, just like our last three days have, definitely something to look at and um, show some substantial movement to the upside. Now, this is a pretty rapid break, a, a pretty rapid move by QQQ. Um, again, I wouldn't be surprised to see a healthy pullback on a lot of these, uh, but I also wouldn't be surprised to see them continue moving forward. Daily, uh, we are starting to enter into the overbought area on the RSI. Uh, but again, you know, these things, as we're in all time high territory, these can remain overbought for just about as long as they want because generally they are just moving into uncharted territory. Uh, so if the buyers are strong and they continue this type of volume, I wouldn't even really look at this RSI other than to just know that there's a pullback coming eventually. Um, but overall, bulls are definitely pushing this up pretty heavy. Let's go on the 15 minute here. We are uh, again in this overbought territory on the 15 minute. However, I would focus more so on the larger time frames as we approach uncharted territory. But again, a similar approach to SPY. We have this previous uh, resistance at about 4.16.70, um, just about 4.17 that we did need to break above before we could go up and go towards uh, the psych 4.20 level. Looking at the chart here, it looks like just about, I would say honestly, like I, I want to pick 4, 20, 30, just because we have multiple touch points. We have a push up, a touchdown, a touchdown, and this, this candle also touched it. Um, but just for the sake of us being in such a heavy uptrend, I would really want to see the breakdown fully of 4.19.80 um, before looking short, just because we could get a fake out from these levels at 4.20.30, uh, where the, we could get a push down strong to just this spot, and then bulls can push it up further. So I'd really just look for a strong breakdown of this specific level, 4.19.80. As far as upside, again, we're going to be targeting just about the high of the day, which was 421.75. As far as for intraday during the market, um, we do have 421.97. But I think that if you want to get in just a little bit earlier at a really good price point, I think that that 421.75 spot is going to be the break that we're looking for. Um, now, 425, 421.75 could also do similar to what we were talking about on the downside over here where we could push this level and then get stopped right there at 422 where we kind of got stopped at twice um so it's very possible so if you wanted to be safe i would set your level at that high of about 421.97 but if you want like a little bit of a head start on this i would say that generally around 421.75 is what we're looking at for the break uh, as far as where we're going to go here on QQQ, it's it's tough to tell. Um, the only thing we really have that we can use to kind of get an idea is if we use our Fibonacci uh, retracement tool here. I'm actually going to, let me delete this. I'm going to start it from the top. I'm going to pull it to the bottom. The reason I'm doing that is because we do get our extensions then. Um, so with these, generally... The next targets after you break, after you have the pullback and you break out, is 161%. That's what a lot of people will aim for. So 435, again, not, not necessarily needs to happen this week. I would say we have some psych levels to keep an eye on more so than anything. So 425, um, let's see here. I would say 425 is going to be a psych level you're going to watch for. Uh, 430 could even be a level. Uh, again, a nice whole round number. These round numbers, even to the dollar values, whenever we approach them, just know that there's a chance that they we could find our top at those uh, numbers there. I think overall, though, the target for uh, QQQ should be up towards that 430 to 435, um, all said and done. But again, 425, 430, 435, I would say keep those levels marked as well as if you want to mark down the dollar values, uh, 22, 23, 24, 26, 27, etc. Um, they could be used as really good resistances as well. Just remember, guys, we're not here for the full move, so don't be holding these for these numbers. You know, we're here for a piece of the pie. We're not here for the whole thing. So just always remind yourself. All right. Um, at this point, guys, I'm going to go over 
I'm going to go over Tesla next. While I'm going over Tesla, if you guys want to start dropping some names in the chat um, of stocks you guys want looked at, feel free to do so, and I will be right on them. So let's check out Tesla here. Um, so opposite to the market, Tesla has honestly just been kind of getting beat down. Um, they're really just losing their steam. Uh, on the weekly time frame, I've, I've had this kind of drawn out for a while. This almost, it's a channel at the moment. But I was hoping before that it might turn into a bull pennant. We did have slightly the breakout of it, uh, but the bull or the bears did, excuse me, step in pretty heavy, push price action right back down low. Uh, at the moment, I would say that we're, we're looking for a possible double bottom here, about 205. Um, that's, that's our generally the the most favorable target um, I would say there is a chance that we could go down to that 200 EMA on the weekly time frame to test that and see if the bull or if the bears are going to be able to push it um, below now if we do break 194 uh, 195 194.30 to be specific if we do break that level we what's up Okay, we'll go downstairs. <laughs> uh, if we do break down that 194.30 spot, uh, we do have quite the ways down. I would say if we do break that level, there's a very good chance that we could retrace all the way down to about 178 uh, before we see any kind of recovery uh, on Tesla. So definitely worth watching. Now, you know, if Tesla can get that break to the upside, you can see that the 15 minute is starting to flirt with the 200 EMA. Um, you can see that previously, if we look at this, this has been our kind of bane to the existence. We can't get above it ever since we started the downtrend. So if we can start to break above that 15 minute 200 EMA, I think we have a good shot trying to reverse this, uh, get back to the upside. Now, where exactly that'll happen, I'm gonna be honest, I'll probably put my the high of Friday, 213.20. I do believe that as this 200 swoops down tomorrow AM, um, that that spot generally will be a good breakout spot to possibly ride up. I would say the targets will generally be about 215 to, is generally from 215 to 217 that I would I would say we should expect that to pop up too. Um, we do have a little bit of a gap uh, from right. I guess it would be technically. We do have a little bit of a gap from about 218.50 to just about 220. Now this is where you know there's a little bit of. A little bit of a disruption in the market structure on Tesla. So we see this push up <clears throat> here in the morning. I'm not sure which day of the week. This is the 18th, so on Thursday. I see this push up, you know, trying to fill that gap that was created on Wednesday. Um, it did partially fill it. It got up there uh, to about 219.26. So arguably, I would say the gap is more like 219.30s um, to just about 220.30. So as far as upside targets, that's what we got there. The 213.20 break of the high day on Friday can set up the 215 to 217 little range um, that we could target for the first price target. And then, of course, like I said, we do have that bit of a gap up here uh, from prior at about 219.30. So just a couple spots I'll be watching for. Uh, for the bull side, again, the bear case is we just keep continuing to break down lows and create new lower lows. So we're gonna lose the low of Friday, 207.50, um, and that should bring us down to, again, that pivotal level, about 205. I think we need to hold, otherwise it's gonna be that test of the weekly 200 EMA that we'll get ourselves down to. So that is what I'm looking at on Tesla. All right, I see a couple of suggestions coming in here. Let me check out SoFi real quick. I know I was supposed to check this out earlier, so my apologies, dude. Just got a little sidetracked. Um, let's see the retracement here. I'm just generally going to look at this from how I usually look at them. So you have this retracement. 
uh, from the lows to the high of this last swing low swing high on the weekly we are pulling back to that 72 percent spot uh, which is a nice sweet spot if you use the retracement tool you'll find that 78 is actually where it usually is i put it to 72 because i feel like more often than not we see the 72 bounce uh, before the 78 so 72 we do have some nice consolidation there in the last weekly candle a good close on friday for the bulls um kind of like a nice hammer candle with volume not quite the volume we want to see it's it's better than usual i would say uh but we want to see some more we want to see some continuation of volume here first targets for the bull case i would say you're looking at that um that daily let me get rid of this real quick you're looking at that daily 200 ema uh so about what is it 782 just up, yes, basically seven uh, seven ninety. So you're looking at about seven ninety for your your first target here on SoFi. Uh, if we can clear that one, if we get some good volume here on Monday uh, with follow through on price action, I would say there's a good chance this could push up as high as uh, eight twenty, eight fifteen, eight twenty. Um, but overall, this one isn't a downtrend at the moment. We we lost the twenty MA. No. We teetered on the sixty. I think when we had this class last week, we were just starting to break down right here when I looked at it last. Um, and you can see that that bear flag played out perfectly. Um, did they push it lower? This is a good sign for the bulls to bounce right where they did actually at a previous kind of consolidation range. Wanna see some follow through with volume and price action uh, coming here on Monday, Tuesday. So I would really use those daily levels, honestly, for these these lower float, um, or sorry, not low float, but just less vol less volatile move moving stocks. Um, so yeah, like seven seven ninety, I would say is your general target right now. Uh, in order to make new highs, you want to break old highs. So just use the highs and lows of Friday's candle as your your general uh, spots to look for the breaks. All right, let's see. M and Q, M E S. Um, I'll go over that here at towards the end, just because that's the future charts. Um, we're gonna go over a couple stocks first. So we'll go over Microsoft. Let's check out Microsoft here. All right, so Microsoft on the weekly time frame. I like this kind of flag that we almost broke out of right here. You know, a very nice channel, or sorry, lower highs, lower highs, but didn't kind of keep that consistent low, not making lower lows, just keeping a nice support line, followed by the breakout. It's a perfect execution. Um, this kind of hammer candle here, it's an interesting one because I've seen it both ways where these hammers will, will end up reversing um, as kind of letting you know that, there's, hey, there's a top that's in, but I've also seen these, ha these hammer candles really show some big bullish strength. Um, this one's a little bit tough because again, we are in our uncharted territories here on Microsoft heading towards 400, uh, with the volume kind of showing a little bit of divergence. Um, you know, bulls are pushing up volume shopping. It's just a little bit and we are overbought. It'd be very interesting to see if this does continue and push that 400 level, or if we see some relative weakness with this compared to the market, get that little pullback. Uh, which would be healthy still you know i'm not saying this is going to go totally bare i'm just saying to keep an eye out this could you know if it doesn't want to keep pushing just because of overbought not enough volume could see that pull back uh isn't hammer candles at the top considered hanging mans um so i would say typically you need to see a little bit more of a wick on the top side um with the bottom wick that we have here, that's the first part of the hangman. You have the head almost, but you need to have it pulled back. So like where my cursor's at, I would have liked to see a close more here at like 397 for the bear case. Um, just showing that towards the end of the week, they were able to kind of pull it back down. You can see that on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, the bulls were in full control. You actually do have some good ramping volume on Friday. So I'm leaning more bullish on this now, looking at it on the daily. Um, but yeah, a hangman generally you have a, a small wick on the upside and a larger wick on the downside with a 
with a, a smaller-ish body, not quite doji. Doji is like really skinny. Uh, you want to have a little bit bit of meat on it, but no, I would not consider. Um, I wouldn't consider these hangmans. I would consider them hammers. They're just hammers in an uptrend, which uh, generally is strong bullish sentiment. So, yeah, look at the overall trend on Microsoft. Super bullish, pushing up. Um, again, now that I looked at the daily, I would say that we are leaning a little more bullish, uh, pushing up in continuation. 15 minute time frame. We are looking at, looks like just about that high of the day, which I'm not sure if it would have clocked the high at 398.70 or 399-ish. 398.94. For the sake of this, I'm going to say this 398.70 is probably a more useful level. Um, if you want to be really safe because we are in uncharted territory, use the high. Use that just about 399. If we do break 399, obviously continuation will continue on. As far as for the downside, we have a resistance right at about 397 now because on Friday morning, we had this this gap up followed by the push down uh, we did get the push down and then when we retraced we got stopped here at about 397 and then filled that gap down used that 397 spot as our intraday resistance what was once a resistance is now going to turn to support or at least that's how it should be so you're gonna be looking at 397 for support here we don't want to see that break obviously 397 will line up fairly nicely with that 60 EMA, so break of that 397 level or the 60 EMA uh, would be your confirmation for downside. Targets on the downside, I would say you're looking at 396. If 396 gets lost, looking at about 394, 90, just about 395, if not the low of Friday. Highs, again, we're in uncharted territory, so we really could just continue moving. Um, you know, a couple more dollars, you never know. I would say 400 right now is most likely going to be a pretty heavy psychological resistance. So even though we break 399, uh, once we approach that $400 level, I would be very, you know, just careful hopping in the calls that high. Um, you want to almost see it reject or wait for a rejection, wait for the pullback, and then hop in on the pullback, if anything. All right, let's check out Netflix. Wow, I cannot spell. Oh my gosh, N T F X. No, N N F L X. All right, guys, I'm gonna get this right. There we go. Jesus, they went away. All right, there we go. Ta or uh, Netflix. All right, <clears throat> weekly, I know this one, I believe this week has earnings. Um, so this is gonna be a tough one to kind of look at from a technical standpoint as it almost looks like it's kind of chopping around to be honest, um, from the weekly at least. You know, but it is it is coming off of a nice continuation green candle followed by inside, you know, the range here, we have it sitting within the range of the previous week's candle. It'd be very interesting. I think we're going to have a nice move this week, but that's kind of given with the earnings um, that that's likely to happen. Let's check out the trend here. So we have a kind of a clear trend uh, going on right here. I'm just going to outline almost this upward channel. We're just kind of fluctuating between it, likely the lead up to the earnings report, um, just some not really not really sure what's going on from the, the buyers or the sellers. Uh, just waiting to see what that guidance looks like. So this is a tough one to play. I would say if, if you're waiting for earnings, which earnings is on Tuesday. I'm not sure what the time. I can't see the time. But it's on Tuesday, um, so that might mean in the morning if it is. Definitely don't recommend holding anything overnight unless you're wanting to gamble it. Um, same thing if it is on Tuesday leading into Wednesday. Don't recommend holding it over unless you are willing to gamble it. Maybe we'll have some earnings plays. We'll see. But generally, this thing's just going to kind of chop around until the earnings report comes out. So I would say if you're looking for some intraday scalps on this, you're going to
going to be wanting that break here of about 485. 45, you break that, likely to see 486. Um, and kind of fill this, this uh, fair value gap up to about 47.60. So yeah, you got 485 four to break. Uh, that would be the breakout level for me on this one. 486 would be your target, all the way up to 487.50, scale on the way through those. Downside, looking at this previous kind of resistance we had here, about 481. Got here, 481.60. I like 481.60 spot there. If we lose that, I think we get a quick little push down. It won't be anything crazy off the off the get-go there. You might be able to make a nice dollar move out of it. So 480.32. And then if we do push down lower than that, I think we're going to start go looking into the lows there on Friday. Uh, first target would, would likely be about 479 flat. And then, of course, if we break out of the uh, the channel that we have here, uh, this trend line, we could see even more downside to the 60 EMA on the daily. But again, with earnings on this one, just be careful uh, playing this one out. All right, let's check out Intel. I think Intel's another one uh, that we do see some earnings on for this week. I don't know what I was charting on this before, but downside. That didn't happen. Give me a second here. Let me get rid of this. <clears throat> All right, weekly wise, we're just kind of trending up right now. Just been slowly uh, moving up over the last couple of weeks slash months. Looks like for the last like three months generally, price action has been pushing. I like this crossover on the weekly. I think this is a very bullish signal. Uh, whenever this 20 crosses the 200, um, could show that uh, buyers are definitely stepping back in for the longer term. Now, we are in a little bit of overbought territory on the weekly, but volume after a slight pullback, volume is picking back up last week, probably anticipation for earnings. Friday's volume in particular was very large after uh, almost an indecisive day on Thursday where the, the, the Bears kind of held it there underneath the 20, but ultimately the Bulls got the upper hand. Looks like on, this would be Thursday. Thursday they have their earnings. Um, so we could see some run up to the earnings with this kind of volume if they can continue. You're looking for a break here, about 48.70. Sorry, 48.77, my apologies. Um, Want to see that break break the high of a previous uh, week's high to get that move. We do have a small, small, small gap, I believe, for right here. And about 490, so, oh my gosh, 490, 49.30, all the way up to about $50 psych level. So there's a good chance we could see that get filled even before earnings. So I would anticipate that this is going to continue moving uh, in that direction just based on Friday's price action. 15 minute again we got that 4877 uh 4876 was the high on friday so we won't go above that downside if you're looking intraday you're looking for that breakdown of about 48 dollars which should line up pretty nicely with that 60 as it curves up so 48 dollars you want to lose that to continue moving down if you lose that i think the likely target is about 47.50 uh, which again should line up pretty nicely with the 200 in this area. So Intel is a very, um, if I remember correctly, a pretty low liquidity stock. Uh, doesn't get a lot of volume on the daily. Uh, let's see here, 50. Well, I, was, I mean, I guess it gets 55 million, or that was a good day. On a normal day, it's like 30 million. I guess that's pretty good volume actually. But just be careful if you do get into these ones. It's like it's good volume. I would still recommend getting two to three to four week out contracts at least. Um, would not be trying weeklies on these. I think you'll get burned pretty hard if you do. So that's Intel. Check out AMD. So, wow, that is a pretty candle. 
Um, <clears throat> just zooming out here on the monthly, I mean, just insane strength right now. We have, you know, th we're, we're about to close uh, three green solid candles uh, back to back to back. Uh, this, this volume after the last candle here will likely supersede the previous and it's just it's on a run i mean this thing is looking pretty strong uh, at least from a long-term standpoint i'm talking like months y six months a year down the road it's looking strong um weekly wise you know we just we just sent it about 25 dollars in one week which is just insane um the semiconductor you know area is just hot right now it's crazy but good volume there we are in overbought territory with amd I don't necessarily know that we will just continue running um, here week over week. I think that we're going to have to have a week where the volume is either, or sorry, the price action is either going to create a high and then pull back into this range, um, which would be very healthy in my opinion, depending on the strength of the sellers. But I do expect that to happen sooner rather than later as we, you know, again, on the weekly time frame, we're an overbought. The daily time frame, we're very overbought. But we are in unexplored territory, so it could just continue to run. Um, I think a, a likely scenario is we get a little bit of cool off before a run into earnings. Or the opposite, where we get a run into earnings followed by a cool off. Or sorry, run a run followed by a cool off into earnings. Um but with the strength, you know, it, you can't ignore the fact that it is just pushing higher and higher. Uh, so don't fight the trend. Definitely don't be shorting this, uh, in my opinion. Let's look at the 15 minute here just to get some intraday levels. So just about this high of the day, I would say, which was roughly, uh, let's see, where is it at? About 174.25, 174.30. So just about 174.30. I know that in after hours we are above that, um, but 174.30 is generally a spot I want to see break. Obviously, again, in after hours we are well above it, so you want to look at also that 176.26 spot. Um, but assuming if we do pull back, I would look at that 174.30 area for the next potential leg up or 176.26 if we do break that. That's, that's also gonna be a good spot to break. Continuation. Downside, similar situation. This, this chart looks very similar to the SPY and the QQQs as far as we, we do have this kind of liquidity, this open liquidity down here, a fair value gap the sellers can exploit if they would like to. All the way down to looks like about 168, say about 168.70. So if the sellers can get enough momentum, they can definitely target this area. Uh, but generally, just keep your EMAs on look. So if we do push down on the 15-minute time frame, we start losing. What is it? 174 flat. If we start losing 174 flat, I would say uh, look for that target of obviously the 60 EMA first, and then if that does break down, this 200 should line up pretty well with that 168.70 zone. So watch out for that. <clears throat> but overall, momentum is for the bulls. They're just shoving this thing higher and higher. It's crazy. All right, let's check out. I'm gonna check out Disney real quick. Wow, look at that. I don't know when I drew this. Maybe it was last week. But just a perfect, you know. A perfect showing of how this this pattern plays out the bull flag you know you have this nice push up followed by consolidation within this channel kind of getting tight and then just a nice release with volume this is looking gorgeous I think they also have earnings coming up and eh, not for two weeks I think this there's a possibility this could be the run into earnings so Disney should be on watch uh, heading into the next week possibly even the following week We'll see, but definitely be watching that this week just because of that volume ramping with earnings. A good two weeks away, I think they could get this run before uh, the week of, or inevitably they'll just chop up the op options. Weekly-wise, another thing to watch out for here is we have this, this touch point that we've been hitting multiple times for the last, oh my gosh, what is this, two years? 
just about like a year and eight months. Um, we've been tapping the same spot as trend line multiple times. We are starting to get that break for it. The 60 EMA is in our way, as well as obviously that trend line. So the 60 EMA there, uh, wherever that falls, I can't really, I can't see the number because it's blocking it. I think it's 94, 94.25. I can't see it, it won't let me see it. 94.22. Generally, that 60 EMA on the weekly is gonna be our, our main target to break above to see anything substantial um, out of this move. Daily, again, if we put that 94.22 on our chart here. Put 94.25. As the days goes on, uh, as the day goes on, this will line up pretty nicely with this previous high we had, as well as the trend line when we're looking at it on the daily. Let me get rid of some of these lines down here that are confusing me. All right. <clears throat> so yeah, 94.25 uh, seems to be that that general break spot to get us to push towards 96. If you look at this a little closer on the 15 minutes, you can see clear as day that this, this 93.60 spot could get that move started to the 94.25 as we tapped off of it on Wednesday as well as on Friday. So I'll generally be looking at that. Um, if you're feeling a little risky, you could even arguably look at this 93. 25 spot for a possible push to the 9360 um, but 9360 generally is where you want to be watching uh, for the breakouts that take that on downside you see we kind of have this clear as day support here at about 9280 want to see 9280 break down we have a couple wicks down to this previous resistance at 9250 pull this down a little bit just about 9250 after 92.50, obviously the lows of Friday would be the next target for me. Uh, generally, that 91.75 to 92 pocket. So right in here, right where we have a lot of kind of just chop action. I'll be looking for, for a general support right in that area. So upside 93.60 uh, to be safe, as well as downside 92.80 break that see 92.50 pretty quick followed by 91.75 to 92 upside we break that 93.60 94.25 i believe is the next target um, if we get enough volume we could possibly push out of this long-term trend uh, to the downside to possibly go up and target the 200 ema again more long term probably looking at this you know a couple weeks to a month or two out for this kind of a price target <clears throat> All right, I see, uh, I see Cutter. Hmm, Cutter looks to be a bit of a penny stock. Weekly, uh, not last week, but the previous week had some good volume. What was that? A one nine. Let me see the news. One nine raises after. Looks like they got a, a good earnings report. See the revenue of 211 to 212. Huh. Announces preliminary aud unaudited financial results. Okay, so they got a nice push off of their financial results. Um, I'm wondering if their guidance wasn't quite as nice just because of this, this sell off afterwards, uh, in the coming days afterwards. We are pushing down on a support. We actually tapped on a support on Friday at about 260. <clears throat> If 260 can't hold, I would expect the next level to be at just about that 212, um, generally 210 to 215 kind of range. Let's go in here. I'll go in the 30 minutes just to give you guys a clearer picture. So like I said, if we lose at 260, I think the next down spot would be about that 215, right about 215 right there. Let's put it right there. So 215 then to the downside. Um, Overall, the trend on this one, while it looks nice on the weekly with that volume, we did kind of push up to tap that 20 MA, and it looks like continuation is looking to the downside. So I would not really be looking long on this, to be honest, until we see some strong buyers step back in. It looks like nothing but sellers at the moment. So, uh, yeah. 
I would only really look at this from the daily levels perspective. So as far as for upside, you want to see obviously that 20 EMA break. I would say you could probably start accumulating a position uh, once we break out of 375. If you want to start it down here, just know not to get in too heavy, kind of scale into it, keep a nice tight stop. Um, but yeah, 375 for potential reversal to the upside with lots of potential on this one. We got plenty of room once we can break out of that five dollar psych level. Uh, next up would be, you know, probably about 6:30 ish, about 6:30, um, and then you know up into the eights plus. But got to see some more volume, particularly for the bulls. See some green volume come in. All right, let me. I'm gonna really quick. I'm gonna go over some of these uh, futures charts here. I'll show you guys a couple of these as well. Let me switch my cam over. Give me a sec. Share this one. All right, switched over to this chart just because I use trading view for my futures. Let me know. You guys can still see this. Just want to make sure I just switch it to my other monitor. Good, cool. All right, so <clears throat> first and foremost, we're going to go over, uh, look at NQ. So if you guys don't know about this, NQ basically is looking at QQQ um, basically in the future. So just you know, seeing where it's at currently at 8.18 here p.m. I'm looking at the three minute candle. A lot of this stuff is gonna really reminisce with what we just talked about um, on the, uh, the Weeble chart for QQQ and SPY, uh, just for the NQ and ES. You can see again, volume continuation. There's not a whole lot of volume going on right now. Uh, we did get a little pop up from where we closed on Friday so far. So again, with that gap up opportunity, it's there. The buyers do need to keep stepping on the pedal. Maybe a, a little bit of a pullback overnight before a push up before the 4 a.m. open. But generally, again, it's going to look just like the QQQ chart we went over. Same thing with ES. Uh, similar format. Again, pushing up slightly here in the first two hours of it being open here. Um, but ultimately, I think you know overnight we're going to probably consolidate before the move up. We might even gap down. Who knows? Um, but these are just the futures charts here. Not much volume going on. So f trading futures around this time, 8 p.m. is when the when the volume does pick up. But I don't think it becomes quite tradable um, or, or very tradable in my opinion until about 9 to 10 p.m. Um, that's when it seems to kind of come a little bit more alive. Let's see here on YM. YM. I don't think I've actually ever tried YM. So I don't even really know what this one is. Looks interesting though. It's, it's kind of similar. It's kind of similar to QQQ. Same, same kind of movement. It does look like it's got a little more range. Um, like we've been consolidating on this one with a hefty move for the last couple of weeks here. So we are starting to get that push here in the after hours um, or the evening trading hours. In the hourly, sharp crossover, 20 EMA over the 200 EMA. Very bullish. However, we have kind of extended ourselves, as you can see here on the RSI. Uh, we've kind of overextended ourselves, so I wouldn't be surprised to see a little pullback. Um, down to that 20 EMA on our larger time frames. Nice. It's got some blue, blue squishies. Yeah. Yeah. It's a trooper. Uh huh. All right. RTY. Um, so this, if I'm correct, this is the equivalent to IWM, ticker IWM on Weeble. So kind of our, our small caps. Uh, so it should reminisce pretty closely with that, but RTY1 um, looks like on the, let's look at the weekly here. Yep, yep, so this is definitely IWM, I know this chart, I know this this kind of consolidation we've had on that one. Um, so I actually like this one potentially for a long idea. Uh, I like that we've come down, we, we broke above 
these previous highs at about 2005 to 2006. Um, now we did pull below it so far here on the weekly, but I like the retracement, the push up followed by the retracement, not too far down. They didn't fall back into the range. It's kind of just sitting on the top of the range here. So ultimately we got to reclaim, wow, I was way off 2005 is what I was looking at 2005 to about 2020 is what I meant. So we, we got to see the reclaim of the 215, 220 range uh, to see continuation. But there's definitely some room uh, to the upside here. I think likely target short term could be that 2110 uh, to about 2000, 2136. So generally that, that little pocket right there where you see all these wicks coming down. Again, it's on the weekly time frame. So we see these wicks coming down i would say that's generally the zone we're going to be looking at for buyers to kind of push it towards for the next uh resistance let me put this before he is so yeah generally in this little pocket overall looking bullish um just a nice healthy pullback actually i really like the amount of pullback it had if you go from the bottom here to the top Weekly wise, we just made a nice 38% pullback. It's very common for stuff to bounce from that 38% and even continue on to higher highs um, or just consolidate down into a flag pattern. So a couple nice futures charts there. Um, but anyways, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this live. Uh, thank you guys so much for coming out. Thanks for uh, throwing some suggestions in for me to check out for you. Um, Really quick on the weekly brief, just want to go over a couple of key economic events. Uh, it looks like Monday is not really anything crazy. Tuesday has nothing scheduled. Uh, Wednesday, Wednesday doesn't look like it has anything scheduled either. Um, we do have jobless claims on Thursday with durable goods orders. Um, looks like some wholesale inventory. So a couple of things there, nothing crazy. PCE index, core PCE. Uh, on Friday with personal income personal spending so the latter part of the week Thursday Friday specifically could see some more volume get pushed into the market we are in greed territory right now um, I think that if this week does continue to push higher we will enter extreme greed uh, for next week so definitely you know kind of got that little pullback almost we wanted in the market sentiment and now we're going to continue to push higher most likely so just a couple things to keep an eye out for. Obviously, risk down this week, probably some higher volatility uh, to come. Obviously, if you guys have any questions, you can reach out to any of the alpha traders, myself included. Um, ask away, you know, whether it's DM or just tagging us here in the chat. But either way, guys, I just want to wish you guys a happy night. Um, enjoy the rest of your evening, and we'll get on to a nice profitable week here in the chat moving forward. So have a good one, guys. Take care.